On a cold day in winter on February 19, 1869, the first son was born to Reverend Father Tadevos and his spouse in the Serre of Armenia, in a village well in the mountains. They named the child Hovanes after its grandfather, who had been a valiant soldier. But Hovanes is also the name of a saint, Saint Hovanes, John the Evangelist. So, Hovanes' birthday was celebrated on Saint Hovanes' day, January 14. Later, seven more children, four brothers and three sisters, were born in the family. Their mother, Mrs. Sona, and father, Reverend Tadevos, were very happy to have them. Thanks to little Hovik's father, the villagers soon could have oil lamps in their houses. They also first tasted potato and cabbage and found these vegetables very palatable. Hovanes was a restless child and cried a lot. He took his first steps very early. One day, holding onto the wall, he went out into the yard and Zarik combated him with its horns. Imagine how the child cried. On another occasion, he wanted to put his head into a bird's nest and the little chicks, with their yellow beaks wide open, shrieked at him. The poor thing was horrified. When Hovanes grew up, he chose a beautiful spot in the village called Did. It was only a hill, but for the little boy, it was a huge mountain. Climbing to the top of the hill, he would watch the stars, dream and imagine he was soaring in the air. Sometimes, the boy would even try to pick the stars from the sky, but failed in his attempts. Nor could he embrace the walnut tree, which grew in the gorge not far from their house. Though, the village children helped him, but its trunk was too wide. Hovanes was very good at playing kochi with other boys. There was a boy in the village, Neso, who knew many fairy tales. At night, he would tell his playmates about fairies, about the dark and bright worlds, the emerald bird and other magical things. Hovanes was 10 years old when he went to study at Jalalogli school. The Granter Davtian, the headmaster of the school, was a man who had rich life experience. He had a big library in the house where Hovanes often borrowed books. It was in the school that the youth fell in love for the first time. Virginie was the headmaster's daughter, and he devoted his first poem to her. Perhaps he hoped that with the help of the poem he would get Virginie's kiss? The girl slapped him instead. Hovanes thought to continue his education at Murad Rafaelian Armenian College in Venice. But his father wanted his son to have a military education or enter Gevorkian Seminary in Holy Echmiadzin. In the end, it was decided to send the boy to Tiflis to study at Nersisian school. Hovanes was only 14 when he and his father set off to Tiflis on horseback and reached their destination in three days' time. Many Armenians lived in Tiflis then. The town was one of the largest centers of Armenian culture and education. Most mayors of Tiflis were Armenians. Young Hovanes was accepted in Nersisian school, an institution founded by Catholicos Nerses Ashtaraketsi. He was especially fond of the history lessons. Serenz, the history teacher, would tell the pupils about the valiant Armenian kings and warriors, and his stories excited the young minds. Before graduating the fourth year, Hovanes left school and began to read extensively. Soon, he got familiar with the works of William Shakespeare, the renowned English playwright. After a time, he began attending performances where Petros Adamian, the celebrated actor, played, and made up his mind to become an actor so that he could meet him. One day, he was trusted to play a role of a dead soldier. He was to lie dead on the stage until the curtains were closed. But when Adamian appeared on the stage, the dead soldier opened his eyes and raised his head in order to see him. The audience burst with laughter. After his failed acting career, Hovanes began to work for the shopkeeper Salam Began. It was his responsibility to open the door for the clients and hold their coats. But he refused to bow to the rich customers and left the job. In Tiflis, Hovanes and his friends became members of a secret organization, which aimed at saving Armenian schools, churches and language and liberating Western Armenia. Selling his coat, he bought a gun with the money. However, he could not go to Western Armenia on account of his illness caused by drinking too much beer and eating too much cherry.
Whoever drinks beer after eating cherry. Those who had left to fight died on their way. At the age of 17, he rode the dog and the cat. And he was only 19 when he married a handsome girl. Her name was Mariam, but he called her Olga. As wedding presents, Hovanes gave Olga a pair of elegant shoes and a few treasured volumes. He signed a wedding contract where it was mentioned that he was to become a priest. And though his service in the church was short-lived, a few funny incidents happened to him. Once, the prince who was performing the liturgical service turned round with the gospel in his hands and accidentally hit Hovanes' nose, which started bleeding. On another occasion, instead of a funeral service, the future poet held a wedding service by mistake. In 1890, the first collection of Tumanyan's poems was published in Moscow. By that time, ten children had been born to him. They father numbered them jokingly. His daughter Ashren, who was number two, could replicate her father's signature and he said, Luckily, I don't have money in the bank. Photographing was Hovane's hobby. He had three photographic devices and loved taking photos of his children. He also liked taking pictures of the ruins of Anim. This is Catholicos Hrimian Hayrik Makartic Hrimian. He is riding the horse of Hovane's brother. The photo is taken by Tumanyan. There were so many noble and intellectual people in Tumanyan's social circle. Just look at their posture and the way they are dressed. This is Karapet Galfayan, a talented actor from Constantinople. When he played Hamlet in Tiflis, he had to borrow Tumanyan's shoes. These are Tumanyan's friends who were patrons of arts. Not only were they rich, but they also had noble spirit. In 1901, Tumanyan left for Abbas Tuman in order to improve his health. Breathing the fresh air of the pine forests, not only did he recover, but he could also meet his invisible muse more often and started to write efficiently. It was here that Tumanyan created such masterpieces as the capture of the fortress of Tumuk, Parvana, David of Sassoon, Sako of Lori, Anush, and they were all completed. Of interest, the composer Armen Tigranyan created the first Armenian national opera based on Anush. It was first staged in Alexandrapol, but before Tigranyan, back in 1907, Komitas Vartapet II began writing an opera based on Anush. Disastrous political events, however, hindered the work and most of the notes were lost. Almast was the first opera, performed in the luxurious opera house designed by the architect Alexander Tamanyan. It was in 1933. It was in 1904 that Andranik, the brave Armenian military commander, secretly visited Tumanyan. They both were being tracked and it was a dangerous visit. Mrs. Olga and the girls served them tea. Tumanyan celebrated his 40th birthday in Medehi prison in Tiflis. The Russian government imprisoned him for his patriotic views. With a group of armed men, Tumanyan would visit the places where Armenian Tatar conflicts took place. Raising a white flag, he offered peace to the enemy, telling them otherwise they would be destroyed. His ancestors had been soldiers and he was a good sniper. It is not every man that can shoot through a ring. Hovanes could. In his prison cell, Tumanya wrote the ballad A Drop of Honey. And during the visit of his two-year-old daughter Tamar, he managed to hide the manuscript in the child's dress and it left the prison. Imagine what could happen if the warden had noticed it. The meeting of the court took place in St. Petersburg. He was justified because he was innocent. The Armenian community organized a good feast in Donon, the famous restaurant in St. Petersburg. Tumanyan founded Vernadun, Garrett, the upper floor apartment of the building, where he hosted his friends to hold intellectual discussions. One day, he offered his friend, the artist Gevork Bashinjarian, to make a gravestone for Sayat Nova near St. Gevork's church in Tiflis. It was in 1914. 
Tumanyan also conceived a very beautiful and sweet-scented festival known as Vartaton, the Rose Festival. On the last Sunday of May, people gathered with red roses near the grave of Sayatnova and celebrated the festival. During the days of First World War, Tumanyan traveled to Western Armenia. He was much impressed by the beauty of his great homeland and so depressed by the horrible events that took place there. At that time, one was liberated. People of one met him spreading roses under his feet. During the years of war and genocide, Tumanyan made considerable efforts in order to help the refugees and the orphan children. He founded shelters for them in Echmiadzin. The children loved him so much that called him father of all orphans. Tumanyan created interesting educating games for children for them to learn with pleasure. He and his friends compiled the school book Lusaber and the children's journal Hasket in order to make learning and reading more enjoyable. While Tumanyan was helping the refugees and orphans, his four sons were on the battlefield. In 1918, his youngest son Artavast was killed in Van by the Turks. Tumanyan's health was getting worse. However, decline in health did not stop him from completing his life mission. On March 23, 1923, he died in one of the Moscow hospitals. His son Arek secretly took his father's heart and brought home. His burial ground is in Hojivank graveyard in Tiflis, and his heart is buried in his birthplace in the Serre. His soul is soaring in the sky. In 1939, on the day of Tumanyan's 17th anniversary, his house in the Serre was made a museum. In 1953, another museum opened in Yerevan, which was the duplicate of Tumanyan's last apartment in Tiflis. All his possessions were moved there. They say his spirit appears there from time to time. <laughs>